I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Friend, welcome to the program. So glad you could join us today. You will enjoy good music and singing. Also, I have a sermon for you that I trust will strengthen, increase your faith in the Lord so that you can receive even more benefits from Him in your life. And you'll watch as people receive prayer and you'll hear testimonies of how God has blessed people through this Jesus ministry. So friend, I know you will enjoy the program today. First, we have Angels Grace Cathedral Choir, I Found Jesus. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide with the bleeding broken heart inside. Tears of shame fell in the sand as they gathered round with stone in hand. But I heard his voice calling out my name. He sent the crowd away in their shame. He told me, child, come and follow me. Oh, his words of love were enough for me. I found Jesus. Never will I be the same. No more sin and no more shame. I was lost in the night. Now walking in the light. But I heard a man from Galilee He healed the sick and made the blind to see So passing through the crowded place With a desperate soul just to see his face But all it took was a touch of his robe Would you believe I was made whole? I found Jesus Never will I be the same No more sin and no more shame I was lost in the light. I found Jesus, Son of God, with heaven's power, reached down to me in my darkest hour. I found my best friend, whose love has no Vanity. I was born in the dark to never see Till a man came by the way He took me by the hand Then I heard him say Friend, I've come to make it right Only believe and receive your sight He spoke the word with love and grace And suddenly I could see his face I found Jesus, I found Jesus. I'll never be the same be the No same. more sin and shame no more sin. Lost in the night Now I'm walking in the light I found Jesus Son of God with heaven's power Reached down to me in my darkest hour I found my best friend Whose love has no end I found Jesus I'll never be the same No more sin and shame Lost in the night in the light, I found Jesus, I found Jesus Son of God, with heaven's power reached down to me in my darkest hour. I found my best friend, whose love has no end. I found my best friend, yes, I found my best friend, whose love has no end.
this race You can't live by feelings You gotta live by faith Don't let feelings tell you what to do You to God, He'll see you through You can't live by feelings You gotta live by faith Your thoughts will deceive you Lead you the wrong way Open God's holy word Hear what He has to say Divine faith without works is dead Listen to what Jesus said You can't live by feelings You gotta live by faith You can't live by feelings If you want to run this race You can't live by feelings You gotta live by faith Don't let feelings tell you what to do You to God, He'll see you through You can't live by feelings You gotta live by faith Stand on God's promises, obey just what he said. Faith in God is the only way, the only way to be led. God's holy word we know is true, faith in God he'll move for you. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. You can't live by feelings if you want to run this race. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. Don't let feelings tell you what to do. You to God, He'll see you through. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. Live by faith and you will know, worry is not the way to go. You must trust Him and believe, that's the only way to receive. Don't you know God's word is true? That's the only way you know what to do. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. You can't live by feelings if you want to run this race. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. Don't let feelings tell you what to do. You to God, He'll see you through. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. Don't let feelings tell you what to do. You to God, He'll see you through. You can't live by feelings, you gotta live by faith. The title of the message is Faith in the Promises of God. Hebrews 11:6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Take note of one particular word in that verse, diligently. Not half-heartedly, not on occasion, diligently seek him. People that do that, they are rewarded by the Lord. To receive miraculous results from God's promises, you must believe in those promises without any doubt. And this requires divine faith in operation. Now, to have faith in God and His promises, well, first, you must know what those promises are. It tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Also, just as important, you must have divine love working within you. Because it tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Therefore, to have understanding of this, you receive faith as you take in the Word and study the Word, and that faith then operates through you by the divine love that's within you. Without divine love working on the inside of you, it is impossible to keep the faith of God working inside of you. And as the starting scripture says, without faith working, you cannot please God. You cannot do so. It is no wonder that Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, which is known as the love chapter. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, or love, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest is love. Therefore, to live by faith 
as the Word of God instructs us to do, God's love must first be there and working within you in order for that faith to work. The truest example, the purest example of God's love and faith working on planet Earth is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus healed the sick and afflicted. He delivered the devil possessed. He raised the dead. He walked the waters. He calmed the angry seas. He laid his life down so that others in the future would have the opportunity to receive eternal life. And then after he died, three days later, he came forth out of the grave, signifying he had conquered death, hell, and the grave. Jesus, as the Son of Man, possessed living reality of his heavenly Father's love for him. Jesus knew beyond a doubt that the Father always heard him. And when Jesus stood before Lazarus' tomb, he proclaimed for everyone to hear, Father, you always hear me. The Word of God says that all of his children, they can proclaim the very same thing. Father, you always hear me. For it says in Psalm 34, verses 15 and 17, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. All. Every word in the scriptures is vitally important. And notice that word all. Not some, not most, all. However, that's determined according to your faith. Unfortunately, many children of God, it's a constant struggle to believe that God even hears their prayers. They come out of the prayer closet carrying the same heavy burdens and cares that they did when they went into the prayer closet. And rather than casting all of those cares upon the Lord, knowing He cares for them, they hold on to them day and night, not really sure if God hears their prayers. Not really sure if God even cares about them or will take care of those problems and cares. And this causes doubt and mistrust with God to grow inside of a person. And the result is living in a perpetual state of confusion, discouragement, and fear. And that is not the heritage of a child of God. This is not God's will for his people. God's will is laid out in his word in Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. Now, you cannot possess such trust that the Bible speaks of without first divine love working and operating within you. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 7 and 9, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. In other words, keep that love. Keep it working. Keep it operating, circulating. Keep it manifesting. Child of God, it is a must to study the Word of God, to hide it in your heart, that the Word may be a part of you, that the Word may abide in you, and you can get answers to your prayers. How can you claim a promise of God if you don't know what that promise is? And how can you have faith in what God has said when you don't know what God has said? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To be ashamed. When you neglect the word of God, then you're going to come up short in reaping its benefits, blessings. The power of the promises will not go into operation for you as they should. 
And if you live your life that way, you will stand before God one day ashamed. Ashamed for not utilizing all that Jesus provided to you when he died on the cross and was resurrected. The bride of Christ in her final walk for the Lord will not allow anything to stand between her and those promises. The Bible says the devil is a thief and a robber. He seeks to rob you of whatever he can. So be careful with the promises of God. He may not be able to rob you of your salvation, but he will try his best to rob you of your blessings and your benefits which come to you through the promises of God. Hide the word of God. Study the word, the promises. Keep them ever before you. Hide those promises in your heart because growing careless and negligent with the promises of God, this allows the devil to rob. This opens the door for the devil to move in and take from you what is not rightfully his to take. Failing to abide in the love of God, failing to study God's word that it may abide in you, this, this unlocks the door and lets the devil steal God's best from your life. You know, if a person possesses many valuables in their home and they begin to grow careless with their home, meaning when they go to bed at night or when they leave the house, they leave windows open, leave the doors unlocked or open. Well, a thief can easily take advantage of a situation like that. And if you don't protect your walk with God properly, the devil will take advantage of you and he will rob you. And guess what? It's your fault. It will be your fault. I mean, after all, whose fault is it if a person fails to properly secure their home when they leave the house? And they have the means to do so, they just don't do it. It's not the thief's fault that the homeowner was negligent. No, the thief just took advantage of the homeowner's negligence. Child of God, don't blame the devil if you are being negligent with what God has provided you. It's not his fault. The devil could never steal from Jesus. And Jesus, as the Son of Man, he was our example, and he used no more power than what is available to us to use to be victorious over the devil. So pattern your life after those in the Word of God. Study their lives. How were they successful in the Lord? How did they receive so much from the Lord? Why are they written in the Word of God for people to read of their testimony for thousands of years? Abraham, the father of the faithful, he was promised a son by God in his old age. Now. Abraham, he did not consider his age, nor did he consider the barrenness of Sarah's womb, being old and never having conceived in her youth. No, he did not consider these things. In other words, Abraham did not consider his problem. He only considered the promise given him by God. Now, Abraham was tested. His faith was tried and tested. It will be, regardless of how good and pure it is. There will be times your faith is tested. And Abraham had to wait 25 years in his old age for this promise to be fulfilled. Nevertheless, it was fulfilled. And this is what the Bible testifies of Abraham as he waited on that promise to be fulfilled. Romans chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Speaking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, 
but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He blessed the Lord before he even saw the results. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham was completely convinced, fully persuaded that God was able to perform what he said, that God's power was greater than Abraham and Sarah's weakness. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Noah, another man of faith, found grace in the eyes of God, and he was promised deliverance from God's judgment that would strike the earth in the form of a great flood and destroy humanity. Hebrews 11:7. by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Noah waited upon the Lord and worked for 120 years for that promise of deliverance to be fulfilled. Waiting upon the Lord is simply is not a passive thing. No, there is action in waiting upon the Lord. That action being doing God's will as you wait. Think a moment. What if Abraham and Noah, in their waiting, let their faith waver? Or they just simply stop believing? What if they listened to the opinions of others? What if they bowed to the devil's mind battles and let doubt and discouragement cause them to fail? Yes, they had mind battles. They were human, just like us. God would have been unable to fulfill his promises in their lives. And people fail to receive from the Lord because they let their faith waver. Believing on opinions of people, believing mind battles, believing self's opinions, rather than trusting and focusing on the promises of God. Or maybe if God doesn't move right away, when they think God should move, suddenly they become impatient, full of questions. Doubt, fear begins to well up on the inside. Won't work with the Lord. James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. If your faith wavers, you better just stop right there and start over, so to speak, or else you're going to be disappointed. If you and your faith waver about a promise of God, about a need in your life, you're not on receiving ground. God moves according to his word, not according to us and what we think and what we feel. He moves according to his word. Therefore, we must align ourselves with the word of God. That way we can receive heaven's best. Moses, he held to God's promise in leading the Israelites out of bondage from Egypt. And when Moses led the people to the Red Sea, Pharaoh's army was coming in from behind them, ready to wipe them off the earth. And it appeared in the natural that they were trapped. The Red Sea in front of them, Pharaoh's army behind them. However, in their hour of need, God gave them a promise of deliverance when there seemed to be no way out. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Take note of the Lord's instruction. Condition to the promise, hold your peace. Keep your opinions to yourself. Now, this should let us know, coming straight from the Lord, that we can hinder our own deliverance. We 
can be a stumbling block for God moving for us. If we are not aligned with the Word of God in our speech, in our mind, in our thinking. God told them to stand still and He would bring the deliverance. But do you know what it means to stand still? Do you truly know what it means to wait upon the Lord and be patient? Well, it tells us in Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Yes, even the young in their hour of great need. They can fail. They can faint. They can fall if they don't wait upon the Lord. If they don't conform to the Word of God and what God says. However, it says in verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. This speaks not physically running and walking. This speaks of spiritual strength. Spiritual, running the race, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Now, if you grow impatient, you subject yourself to doubts, grumbling and complaining, opinions, resulting in you losing out on what God has promised to provide you. Then some, after that, they become so disappointed, they end up drawing back on God and failing Him altogether. However, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 36 and 38, speaking of patience and faith and drawing back on God, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Patience is required. If you want to receive the benefits of God's promises, you need to be patient and do the will of God. In other words, meet the conditions of the promise. Be patient, meet the conditions of the promise, and ye shall receive. Verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. No wonder Jesus proclaimed, In your patience possess ye your soul. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, in those evil days of trial, testing, temptation, and having done all to stand. God promised you can stand for Him, never faint, never draw back, as long as you daily wear His spiritual armor. And if you want to know what that spiritual armor is, just go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. It's all laid out there. And when you stand daily wearing the armor, the promises of God will eventually become living reality in your life. And they will go into action in your life. No struggles to hold on. No struggles to believe. No. Now, Joshua, he too was given a promise of victory over their enemies. The city of Jericho, surrounded by a great, mighty, impenetrable wall. Joshua 6, 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. See, the city was still there. The walls were still strong. But the Lord was saying, see, see through spiritual vision. See through my promise that I've given you. However, in order for this mountain of trouble to be removed from the Israelites and from Joshua's path, and God's promise to be fulfilled, God gave them instructions to follow in order for the promise to be fulfilled. For this promise to be met, there were conditions to be met. 
And so the Lord, through Joshua, instructed the people. The first six days, the Israelites were to march around the city walls one time and say nothing, keep their mouths shut. Sound familiar? Then, on the seventh day, the Israelites were to march around the city wall seven times. And once that was done, they were to give a mighty shout as the priests blew the ram's horns. And when the Israelites obeyed the Lord's instructions that week, and they gave a mighty shout, and the ram's horns blew, the Bible says those city walls that were impenetrable just suddenly came crashing down. Now, it was not the shouts that brought the walls down. It was not the ram's horns blowing. What brought those walls down was obedience to the Word of God, meeting the conditions of God's promise. That's what brought the walls down. Some Christians fail to receive benefits and blessings from God's Word. Sometimes it's because of disobedience in their life. Maybe they're not living quite like they should. Maybe they're not being complete doers of the Word. Maybe they're part-time doers, occasional doers, or they only do some of the Word and not all of it. Others, well, maybe they're simply not meeting the conditions of God's promises because over time they've neglected those promises and failed to hide them in their heart and keep them before themselves, those promises before them. They tie God's hands and they hinder His blessings. All of God's promises in the Bible are conditional, and to receive the full life, power, and reality of those benefits, a person must humbly yield and obey the Word of God. Look at the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was visited by an angel who promised that she would conceive a child by the power of the Holy Ghost. And then that child would be the Son of God. Now, Mary didn't battle and struggle within herself about the will of God and what was promised. No, she did ask, well, how can this be? I don't know a man. And when the angel explained it to her, then she simply said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to his will. Mary submitted to the promise of God, and it was fulfilled in her life. The greatest promise ever given by God is found in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The greatest promise is the promise of Jesus. And by this promise of Jesus, a person can be made brand new, soul, mind, and body. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. By the promise of Jesus, we have all needs supplied, spiritual, physical, and financial. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By the promise of Jesus, there is healing in the body, for the body. James Chapter 5, verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. The Lord. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. 1 Peter 2, 24, speaking of Jesus, Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. The price has been paid, the healing is yours, and in God's word and in God's mind, it's as if you've already been healed. Mark 16, 18, it says, 
they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall recover. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. They shall recover. God promised it. He cannot lie. Be it unto you according to your faith. By the promise of Jesus, there is victory over the devil and his kingdom. Luke 10, 19, Behold, Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. James 4, 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Humble yourselves before him. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So many promises made available to God by humanity, or made available by God to humanity, every promise given through Jesus Christ, the only begotten. Yet, these promises are conditional. And the first condition is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This will start you on a path in your life of God's promises being fulfilled. This will start you on a path in your life of mountains of troubles and trials being removed from your life. However, there are certain promises in God's Word that are without condition. They are absolute promises, and they will be fulfilled. For instance, in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, the spiritually lukewarm would be spewed out of his mouth into the tribulation period. It says in the book of Romans, for the wages of sin is death. Then in the book of Ezekiel, God said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Friend, listening to this sermon tonight, you must be free of all sin and all disobedience. And that can only happen through the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled on the cross for you. For the Bible says of Jesus, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. On the cross, it was a twofold atonement, healing for soul, healing for body. But friend, healing for the body, it starts in the soul. Give your heart to the Lord. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you. Let the power in the blood of Jesus make you brand new on the inside. Jesus called it being born again. And he said in John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Give your heart to the Lord right now. Make your confession unto him. Pray with me this prayer. Say, O oh God, I confess all of my sin before you. Forgive me, Father and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the blood of Jesus that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus, and amen. And if you meant that prayer, friend, Jesus is yours, the promise fulfilled. Now, if you're watching or you're listening by way of world radio and you're sick in body, you're afflicted with a disease, maybe the doctors have no cure. Now, we believe in good doctors, good hospital, good medicine. However, there comes a time in life for some people that man and science do not have the cure, but God does. And it's through the power and the blood of Jesus. As I mentioned in this sermon, Jesus said to his believers, would lay hands on the sick, and they would recover. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer. So if you're sick right now and you're watching, put your hand against mine on the screen. This is a form of laying on of hands. You listening by way of radio, put your hand on your listening device and agree with me together in faith believing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring those who are sick in body, 
those, Lord, who are afflicted. It's not your will. Your son paid the price. And in the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let that healing virtue from the blood flow to each one in need. Deliver them, set them free, Lord, and make them a witness for your honor and glory in this final hour. In the name of Jesus, and amen. Friend, watch every improvement. Give God the honor and the glory. And we would love to hear your testimony, how God moved for you. You can send it by email, testimonies at earnestangely.org. You can send it through Facebook, however you choose to do so. And we will rejoice in the Lord with you. And now you who don't have the Holy Ghost, it's a promise. It's a promise of the Father, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Bible declares, the baptism to be. You can receive. However, the condition is you must first receive the gift of Jesus Christ. And if you have Jesus in your heart, if you're free of all disobedience and sin, you can receive this wonderful gift. I'm going to call the anointing down upon you. And friend, when the anointing comes, you get off to yourself, you praise, glorify the Lord with your whole heart, pour your heart out to God, and that anointing will come upon you. The Holy Ghost will come in, and as you're praising the Lord in your tongue, when the Holy Ghost comes in, He will take over your tongue and speak in another language. That's the miraculous confirmation that He has come into your vessel. And it's all according to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Lord, in the name of Jesus, anoint the people to receive the Holy Ghost. I call this anointing down upon them. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And friend, keep praising the Lord and don't stop till the Holy Ghost comes in. God bless. COVID-19 has changed our lives. It's changed how we go shopping, how we interact with others, how we do business, how we help those in need. But we know that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Even though things around us have changed, God's love is still the same. And as we distance ourselves from each other, we know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So let His love give you comfort and peace wherever you are. Join us as we stream live from Grace Cathedral every weekend. Friend, I tell you, we're seeking to use technology in this Jesus ministry in a greater way than ever before. And I want to encourage you, maybe you're watching today by way of YouTube. Well, I want to encourage you, friend, become a subscriber to our YouTube channel because on a weekly basis, we are adding more and more content. Even the Ernest Angley Hour, we add a new one each week. You can go back to watch it, enjoy it. What a blessing it can be. And also like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. It's just a great blessing. You can enjoy wonderful things of the Lord any time of the day or night. And again, if you want to see more episodes of the Ernest Angley Hour, you can go to our YouTube channel or you can go to ernestangely.org. Either way, it's a great blessing for you. And friend, I want to encourage you now to stand by this Jesus ministry with your tithes and your love offerings. As we seek to utilize technology in a greater way, it enables us to reach people around the world in places we could not reach them any other way. But technology has made this available. It's a wonderful opportunity. Stand by, continue to tithe and give unto this Jesus ministry. Maybe you're watching and you're thinking about joining us, becoming a member of Grace Cathedral, becoming a partner with Ernest Angley Ministries. That's wonderful. What a blessing you can be to God's kingdom because our main goal is to win souls for the Lord, winning the lost at any cost. That's what it's all about. Jesus is coming soon and we must be watching prayerfully, waiting upon his return and working, 
working to bring in his harvest before the return comes. Well, right now we have for you more good music and singing coming up, and then later you'll watch as people receive prayer and you'll hear some great testimonies. But for first, it's the Cathedral Boys, and they have the song Moving Up. Listen. We're moving up to heaven, moving up above. We're moving up to glory, to that land of love. We're moving through the Spirit, we'll soon be flying high. We're moving up, moving up, soon we'll split the sky. You're gonna fight the devil, but God is with you, child. It's gonna be fiery, it's gonna be a trial. Just take the hand of Jesus, he's faithful and he's true. He's a great I am, and he will see you through. We're moving up to heaven, we're moving up above. We're moving up to glory, to that land of love. We're moving through the Spirit, we'll soon be flying high. We're moving up, moving up, soon we'll split the sky. Jesus soon is coming, we're watching day and night. We're gonna be ready for that glory fly. Gabriel soon will call, the trumpet's gonna sound. Soon we'll all be changed, and our feet will leave the ground. We're moving up to heaven, we're moving up above. We're moving up to glory, to that land of love. We're moving through the Spirit, we'll soon be flying high. We're moving up. Moving up, soon we'll split the sky. We're getting ready, children, for that glory ride. We're moving to our mansion, just on the other side. Jesus will be coming to take away our cares. We will soon be rising, right up to the air. We're moving up to heaven, we're moving up above. We're moving up to glory, to that land above. We're moving through the Spirit, we'll soon be flying high. We're moving up, moving up, soon we'll split the sky. We're moving up, 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 we're moving up through the sky.
friend, I pray you've made your final choice to go all the way with Jesus. He's coming soon. Now, taking you to Grace Cathedral and watch, friend, as people receive prayer and listen to the testimonies. Let it bless you in a great, great way. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I sanctify the Lord God. O oh Lord, we declare every miracle, every healing is yours. And O oh God, we give you the honor, the praise, the glory for every good work, every healing, every miracle, every testimony that will come forth tonight in the holy blood name of Jesus, and amen. And what do you need from the Lord tonight? Next Friday, I'm going to have my wisdom teeth taken out. So I just want prayer that everything will go fine, yeah. smooth, according to plan. And uh, the second thing is that I have a lot of back pain. I've had it for a long time, and I'm just kind of tired of it. Yeah. Well, you heard that message. I'm sure you got faith. Yes, I do. All right. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I call healing to his body. Lord, loose him from that condition. Lord, bring his back to normal. Bring his back to normal. In the holy blood name of Jesus. In the blood name of Jesus. You believe God moved? I do. Well, try it out. All right. Twist and turn. That used to trouble you. Feels really good. Oh, see? Yeah. That's what faith does for people. Amen. Thank you very God much. bless you. Thank you. I need miracles from head to toe. Well, thou be made whole in the name of Jesus. Every foul, foreign affliction in her body by the blood, loose her from all of it. I call healing. Healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I curse, Lord, every disease in the blood name of Jesus and make her whole, make her well. Thank Amen. You. Get well. Thank you. Give the Lord a praise. Ah, what I do you need tonight? I have two short testimonies. Okay. And then I want prayer. The last five months in September, I've got a miracle every single month. I got two at church and three in my apartment, but I'm gonna tell about the two I got here. Um, about three or four weeks ago, I came up here because I was having a problem with what is the eustachian tube. I didn't know at that time. Um, it was all swollen and puffy, and it was affecting my ear. And you prayed for me in a different way. And you reached this hand out to me. Mm -hmm. And when I went to reach out to get yours, you slid your hand up underneath mine and put your other one on top of it. And when you did, the power of God went right into me. Yeah, praise the Lord. And so when you took your hand off, I stuck my hand up here. And within two days, it was all gone. Well, praise the Lord. And then... <laughs> Three weeks ago, I come and Reverend Millar prayed for me. I could not breathe, and I was just gasping, and he prayed for me, and I come up and sat down in the auditorium, and the choir started singing about the first two songs. It was okay. I've been breathing ever since. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, Praise the Lord. But something crazy is going on in my body, and I don't know what. I've had an EKG, I've had blood work, and everything's fine, but I know my body, and there's something yeah. that's well, not God right. God knows, too. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, loose her from that condition. Lord, we put it under the blood of Jesus, Lord, to be destroyed, and I call good health. Regulate her body, bring it to perfection. For your honor and glory, in the name of Jesus. It'll go, whatever it is. That's right. It's got to. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't care. God bless you. Get well. Give the Lord a praise. Welcome back. Yes. And what do you need from the Lord tonight? Oh, it's been giving me a whole lot throughout the time since I've been coming. And I mean, he gave me the power and the promises to go through my system and make me stronger with the help of my friends and family. And now that I'm right here at Ernest Angley's church, and I, and I thank God for seeing him a few years ago, right on this very stage, on the backstage, and that I've been coming ever since. Coming ever since, yeah. God yeah. made you whole, didn't yes. yes. And what yeah. do you need from the Lord tonight? Oh, just to keep on hold, keeping me, holding me up. Lord, in the name of Jesus, anoint him. Anoint him for prayer, fasting, and in the word. 
study the word in the name of Jesus and make him a shining light for you. And amen. Now you take that with you. Let yes. it do a work on you. Oh, yes. All right. All right. Give the Lord a praise. Thank you. God bless you. Friend, I want to encourage you. Maybe you've been thinking about paying us a visit. Well, we'd like to invite you to be with us this coming weekend at Grace Cathedral. We have four services, starting with the Friday night miracle service at 7 p.m. Be with us. Enjoy good music and singing sermons that will bless and edify you. And if you're in need of prayer, you can receive prayer. Then Saturday at 7 p.m. We have a youth service that will bless your soul, a service dedicated to the youth, but people of all ages do attend. And then Sunday we have two services. We have a morning service starting at 10 a.m. with more good music and singing and good spiritual food for your soul, a wonderful teaching session to bless you in the main auditorium, and then Sunday evening, 7 p.m., more good music and singing. And we do a variety of things on Sunday night. We have testimonies. Sometimes we do a wonderful Growing in Grace mission program. We share with the people how God is moving and blessing people through our mission program. And friend, speaking of a blessing, if this Jesus ministry has been a great blessing to you, you've received miracles or healings, maybe you receive salvation. We'd love to hear what God has done for you. Give God glory through your testimony. Share it with us. You can send your testimony by email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. Well, friend, I trust today's program has been a great blessing to you. We look forward to seeing you next week. And always remember, you are special to God. Are you enjoying the anointed music, singing, and preaching on this program? I want to let you know it is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Ernest Angley World Radio. Go to our website to listen or download one of our apps. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you have an internet connection, you can listen. Ernest Angley World Radio, a voice to the world. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.